So let's talk a little bit about what pseudocode is first. Um, it's a term that a lot of people, especially people who aren't in the techie side of things, uh, really don't understand or they've never even heard of it sometimes. So when I am starting a scripting project, it's a lot easier for me to sort of map out what I want to do first. It's just like when we're tackling a new piece of art um, or a composition that I'm doing, I'm not going to start by making this super detailed, high realistic eye. I'm going to start by doing gesture drawings and thumbnails and sort of blocking out what I want to do with this particular piece of work. Same thing applies to my code. I'm going to make my roadmap so I sort of have guidelines for what I want to do with my project. Um, and that's what pseudocode does. It's easier for me to write in my native language and block out my thought process in English than it is to try to block it out in Python or Mel, Java, C++. Like those aren't my native languages. I didn't grow up speaking computer. I grew up speaking English. So when I want to convey my thoughts to another person or another thing, it's easier for me to do it through English. Um, so right now I have Maya open particularly with the script editor. And since I'm only going to be worried about writing things down, uh, I'm only concerned with the input window. So at the top here, we have these different view options and I'm going to click on show input only. So that way I have as much space as I possibly can for writing this out. And since this is fake code, pseudocode, it's not going to actually run. We're just typing out sentences for us as humans to read. Um, and you can use whatever language you want to. Um, if you're more comfortable with Klingon or Elvish, you know, totally feel free to write however you want to. Um, but since we're doing comments and we are right now inside of a Python tab, I am going to use double quotes, three of them, and just make a really big comment. I just want space to type in. As far as Python is concerned, if you want to, you can use single quotes. That's totally fine. Just make sure that you're consistent with it. The computer doesn't care as long as our ending quotes match our starting quotes. Cool. So right now, we just want to type out the process that we went through through Podcast 3. If you have not checked it out, um, you might want to look at it first so you understand the steps that we're going through. Um, but other than that, yeah, let's just talk through our system. What did we have to do to get this locator method to work? Okay. Well, the first thing that I had to do was I had to create a locator. Specifically, I had to create two of them. So we can type that here. I had to create a locator. Cool, and I had to create two of them, so I can type that again, create a locator. Right. So as far as pseudocode is concerned, I am definitely concerned with what is the action I am trying to perform? What is the computer supposed to do? In this instance, it's supposed to create. Right? Well, what is it supposed to create? A locator. It's not creating an icon. It's not creating a polygon square or cube, rather. Um, it's creating a locator. So what are you doing and exactly what object are we working with? Now, right now, it's a little confusing. Both of these lines are exactly the same. There's nothing to really differentiate them. So instead of just generically saying create a locator, I can say create locator one. And then here, create locator two. So that way, through the lines of code, I understand that these are two separate objects. I can refer to locator one, or I can refer to locator two, not just a random general locator. So the next process that I had to go through was I had to actually group my locators. So there, the action that I want to do is group something. So particularly group locator one. I'm being very specific with what I want to perform this action on. So verb and then noun, if we're equating it back to English. So I had to do that for locator two as well. So group locator two. And now I know that both of my objects have been affected. Awesome. So that was the initial setup. From there, we moved on to affecting our objects. So the first thing that I had to do was actually get my group one into position. I, need to, I needed to move it between my root and my end joint. And I did that through a constraint. So constraint group one 
between the root joint and the end joint. Cool, that's a fairly functional line of pseudocode, but we could be a lot more specific here and that would save us headache later on. So constrain, right? What type of constraint am I doing? Is it a point? Is it a parent? Is it an aim? Right? So the more specific we are here, the clearer our directions are when we go to actually turn this into code. So instead of just saying constrain, I'm going to be very specific and say, hey, this was a point constraint. And really, if I wanted to get even more detailed with it, we performed this constraint in a very specific way. We did not maintain offset, so without offset. So awesome. Hey, Mr. Computer, do a point constraint on group one, so it's between the root joint and the end joint, and do that without the offset on. Sweet. So theoretically, if this were actual functioning code, right now my group one would be between my root and end joint, which is what I really want. I want that to be on that plane between those two points in space. Sweet. So now we can move on to our next line. So the next process that I had to do was orient group one to match up the way that I needed it to be inside of my scene. And we did that through an aim constraint. And I did that, like I said, to group one, and that was from the root joint. Sweet. After that, I did another point constraint. So it lined up exactly with that center joint. In my example, it was the knee joint. So point constraint, and this was on the actual locator itself. So locator one. So point constraint locator one from the center joint. And here, again, we were we were doing this without offset, but we were only concerned with our aim vector. Um, in my example, it was the y axis. So this is another very important piece of information. We weren't concerned with all of our channels like we were in our first constraint, here we were only constraining one particular axis. Which axis was it? We want to specify so the computer understands what we're trying to do. Cool, so right now as far as pseudocode is concerned, my group one and locator one are set up. Awesome, since I'm moving on to another process, I'm going to add a space so I know that I have moved on to the next step. And here, we were concerned with moving the group of locator 2 to be where our center joint was. And we did that, again, through a point constraint. So point constraint group 2 from the center joint without offset. Sweet. So that snaps my group and consequently my locator to the correct position. And now all we want to do is make sure that it's oriented properly. Lo locator 1 is oriented, so we want to orient our group 2 um, to have that exact same orientation. So again, we were interested in an aim constraint, and that was on group 2 from locator 1. Awesome. So from there, our group is set up properly, so then all we need to do is really position locator 2 inside of our scene. That's where we're going to be snapping our icon to for our pull vector constraint. So from here, we can say move or translate, however you want to say it. So move locator 2 into position. And really, as far as step-by-step -step process, this is all we need um, for the computer to understand what we're doing as far as action steps go. Now, one thing that we're going to run into is like down here when we're inside our constraints, how I'm referring back to objects. I'm talking about root joint and end joint, group one, locator two. We haven't told the computer to really remember anything that we've said. So we're talking to the computer and telling it what to do, and it's awesome. It's like, yeah, I'm going to create a locator, create another one, group it, group it, sweet. And then we get down here, and it's like, wait, 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 what's group one? 
I don't I don't remember you ever talking about group one, right? If we don't tell the computer to hold on to information, it doesn't remember anything that we have said or done. It goes through line by line, and as soon as it's done, it erases everything that it has just done. It's gone forever. So if we want to refer back to something, anything, locator one, group one, center joint, we have to give the computer a way to remember that information. And as far as code goes, we do that through what's called variables. And if this is a new concept to you, um, I would definitely recommend checking out the Scripting Basics podcast series that I have because that's going to cover a lot of really important fundamentals that we need to translate pseudocode into actual working code. Um, but let's go ahead and keep going forward. Um, talking about our variables. So when I'm talking about group one and root joint, right, I haven't specified anything about joints at all in my code until I get down to this point constraint. So we, as humans, understand that we are doing this process specifically for a joint chain. There is something inside of my scene that I'm working with. I can see that I have created it already. The computer doesn't know that though. So we have to tell it that there are joints that we're working with. So really my first step is going to be store the joint chain that I'm working with. So that way I have a way to tell it, hey, specifically this joint, let's do something with that guy. Right? But again, if I'm not telling the computer to hold on to that information with something like a variable, it's going to do this and then throw that information away. So here I can say I'm going to have a variable var and that's going to equal my joint chain. Hold on to that information for me. So now when I get down here, I can say, yeah, remember that guy? Root joint, yeah, that var, use that guy. So when I'm talking about locator one later in my script, I know I'm going to have to have a way to refer back to that guy. So again, I'll have another variable for my locator one, same thing with locator two. That needs a variable. My groups, since I specify those guys specifically, are also variables. Oop, not var, var, there we go. So with my point constraints, I don't really have to go back to these guys. I don't have to delete them. I don't have to refer back to them and change their settings or anything. So they're pretty good as they are. Um, so really, as long as I hold on to all of this information, the computer will understand that for me. So down here, when I say group two, instead of group two, I'll say var five. As far as my code is concerned, it doesn't have to be var five. You can call this group two like that, and then down here we would say group two instead. So there's a direct correlation to your variable name and then the variable that you will use later inside of your code. And again, if this is a new concept for you, definitely check out the basics first because that's gonna really hammer home um, the fundamentals that we need to translate pseudocode into actual functioning awesome code. So. That's, that's one thing that we're going to have to address, variables. Um, also, our aim constraints, they're still a little ambiguous in relation to our point constraints. When I was doing the aim constraints, I had to set my world up type. Remember, we needed that to be seen, um, I believe it was seen up. Uh, our aim and up vectors, we had to set those so they correlated right with our scene. So we're missing a bunch of adjectives and adverbs that would be really helpful for us to figure out now rather than later and having the computer constantly tell us that, hey, we're communicating wrong, we're not using the right information. So if we figure out our information now, it saves us headache later, which is always a good thing. Headaches are bad for you. Right. So if you are new to scripting, this might seem really intimidating. Um, and don't worry, everyone has been there. We all start at square one. So if this is new to you, I would start small. Check out the scripting basics first and really set home your foundation. Get a good, solid, basic understanding down. And then this won't seem so crazy. 
Um, if you do have experience, um, go ahead and totally try it out. Like this is a very, very useful script to have. All you have to do is select your root joint and click a button and bam, your process is done for you instead of having to go through and do all of this by hand multiple times. So definitely well, well worth the effort of having scripts. Um, if you try it out and you're running into issues, totally feel free to email me. I love helping out, um, but have fun with it. Try it and see how it goes. Right. Take care and cheers.